So this video has come about through the many questions I get from clients, the information I see online through YouTube or your social medias. And I wanted to put together a video where there's really no specific plan to what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna freestyle this, but I'm making it for the reason that people come to me and often go, I, I saw a trainer do it this way, then I saw a trainer do it this way, and, I saw, and they get confused. And I think a term would be probably, what's that called, paralysis by analysis. In other words, people don't do anything because they don't know there's so much information out there. So what I'm gonna do for you guys is share a bit of information that I feel is a good way to train your dog. Now it doesn't make my way the best way at all. It's how I do it, how I've learned it over the years through being a former military police dog handler, a quarantine detector dog handler, training with some of the best trainers that you can train with, working under them uh, through my own experimentation, whatever it be, anything I've learned over the years, whatever I don't remember to do in this video, I might make another one part two, but this is basically some tips to train your dog better. Now I've got my dog Nash down here, who's absolutely exhausted. He's been at uh, my doggy daycare for hours today. So for him to be laying there is a pretty rare thing. So he's pretty tired, hey buddy? Huh? He's pretty tired. But he's gonna be part of the video. We'll see what energy we get out of him. So what I wanna start with firstly is to use food or not to use food. Now, it is definitely used food sometimes. Depends on the dog, depends on the age. I feel there are variables that come into this depending on different factors with your dog. First thing is the age. I think food is a good thing to teach young dogs that have a brain that's everywhere just to give them a bit of focus. I think it's a great tool for puppies initially to train them. But the important thing for me as a trainer, what I believe is that food should be faded away almost completely. With Nash, I very rarely use food with him. Um, it's not even his best motivation, so it's not the best tool anyway. Um, and I do believe there's a lot of people that train their dogs with food who think their dog is well obedience trained, but if they really broke it down and someone pointed out to him, the dog is doing it for the food, not because of the command the owner's giving them. Yes, there's a pair in there, but you take the food away and often people say to me, my dog doesn't do it anymore. Hey buddy, someone wants to play. My dog doesn't do it anymore. And this is so, so common. There is a big difference between what you do in your backyard for what you do down at the beach or downtown or wherever it be. And even my dog shows me that. It is challenging. This is why you gotta train your dog. Tip number one would be train your dog everywhere and anywhere. Teach them to be obedient at home, downtown, at the beach, wherever, at your friend's house. Train your dog in these areas. Go to these training places and do a training session. Don't see it as a social session. Train them there. So there you go, there's a tip one for you. Train your dog absolutely everywhere. Food, like I said, we wanna fade it away. I'll give you an example. Yes, if I do this, Nash, hey buddy, I take the toy away, out, out, and I do this, and he sits, good boy. Now, he clearly knows to sit, but what you need to do is test yourself with your dog. So you have no food, go out to your session with no food, don't let him smell it on your hands, don't do anything. There's no sort of luring with the food and, and tricking your dog. We go out with no smell, and I want you to walk up to your dog, if I take him back here, Nash, over here buddy, and I show no food, Nash, sit. Good boy. Oh, he gives me a bag as well. That's the latest one he's been learning. Good boy. No food was offered, he gave me a sit. Okay? Are you getting the same response without the food as you are with the food? Great. Now, if you're going to use the food, what I want you to do is think about doing it this way. Instead of showing the food and, pre food and presenting early, you can hold it behind your back, whatever you want to do. But if I get Nash over here, Nash, sit. Yes. And then... I'm like, good boy, give him the food. Basically, I'm trying to show you, we don't want the food to be your, your magic power. Remember, if what if your dog isn't hungry? What if your dog is focused on something else? Do you have that power anymore? Usually not. If you add in excitement, any distraction, fear, aggression, whatever you want to add into the picture, food becomes non-existent for most dogs. They might still take it, but they'll eat it and then go back to the problem, whatever. And if at the end, you might be reinforcing that behavior by giving food. So I want you to think about that in all your training. Think about, is your dog doing it for your practice and for your command, how you speak to your dog and the respect and the bond and the leadership, or is your dog only doing it for food? Test your dog. So that's number one. Number two, what is your dog's best motivation? If I show Nash food, Nash, what's this, buddy? Okay, bit of food, yeah, motivated. I show him this and I have a different dog. I haven't done anything, he changes. This is my dog's number one motivation. Not this specific item, but 
a toy. If food, he will take it, but it is number, not his number one motivation. I want you to find your dog's number one motivation. This is what lifts my dog. So instead of using food, he'll do a whole training session, five minutes, two minutes, 10 minutes, and at the end, maybe get a tug of war. That's his reward. He would much more choose a, a reward like that that he gets to use some prey drive, a tug of war over a piece of food. Your dog wants to play tug of war. So find your dog's motivation. Yours might be food. It might not be what my dog is, but find the best motivation that gets your dog motivated, that wants to train and work for you. So there are a couple of tips so far. Next thing is equipment. What do you train your dog on? Dog should better be trained on anything. Is there better equipment that can work better for your dog? Uh, get more attention, get more control, get more focus, whatever words you want to use. Yes, there is, I feel. Now for me, I like a slip lead. Number one would be because of safety. They don't come off, they work very well. If your dog has a moment where it gets scared and wants to back out, this isn't gonna come off my dog. This is not about hurting the dog. This is about a pressure and release. Use these right, you do not need to hurt your dog, but you do get better control, better feedback. Especially if you've got a scared dog, that you wanna get into an environment, you wanna help, you wanna encourage them to move past it. If you have equipment that your dog can back out of, a harness or a collar, you can't, get forced compliance in a nice way where we can get the dog in and we can get them to see whatever it is they're scared of, teach them it's okay. If I'm on a piece of equipment where I can't take control of the dog, I can't win that situation, hence I can't help my dog. So thinking about what you use in your dog to keep better control is very important. It is up to you, but for me, a slip lead or after this, obviously a collar, definitely not a harness. I think harnesses for my liking are probably the number one marketed scam when it comes to dog training equipment. They're well marketed because what's well marketed is you'll hurt your dog if you use a lead or a collar. You'll damage their throat. Come on guys, I've been doing this for 30 years and I've never damaged a dog's throat. You've got to be very, very aggressive and very savage in your dog to damage their throat. But it, it's pushed towards you guys as dog owners, which makes you buy a harness. Harnesses give you no control of your dog. Yes, they work well with some dogs, but you'll find those dogs that walk well on a harness probably walk well on anything. They're just good dogs. Some dogs just walk beside you, don't want to pull. Generally, a slip lead, people use check chains, collars, whatever. Head harnesses like Holties are great as well. They're a very good training equipment, a head harness. But that's not what this video is about. The video is about training. So let's go to some basic training. So if I get my dog over here, hey buddy, good boy. Nash, sit, good sit. Put him on his slip lead. When we have a slip lead on, we want it under the chin, nice and high, only a couple of fingers underneath so it stays in position. And we don't put it on a yank it. I don't want to create any ver aversion towards the equipment. You see my dog didn't duck down and hide his head putting it on, he's not worried about it. Okay. So I'm just going to start, like I said, freestyle this really and just run a few th uh, through a few things for you guys. If I feel this video goes on too long, I'll cut it and I'll do a part two, training tips. Doesn't matter what we're doing here. Whether you're teaching your dog a sit, a stay, a down, it doesn't matter. I want you to adopt the principle of one command equals one response. It's very important. One equals one. You say it once, if the dog doesn't do it, you make the dog do it. This comes back to command, direct, and praise. We say the dog's name, we get their attention, we say the command we want, and we enforce it. Remember, if my back was to you now, and you wanted me to give, tell me to do something, you would say my name first, Jason. You would get me to look, then you would ask something of me. You're not gonna give it while I'm this way. Same with your dog. If my dog's not focused, I'm not gonna, I could do it with him, but generally he's gonna be in a world where there's, con there's things around he's focused on. So I need to have good name engagement. Nash. Sit, good boy. If my dog didn't do it then, I don't repeat the word. I'm going to put my hand on his backside or I'm going to lift a little bit of lead pressure until he complies and then the second he complies, the pressure goes away. You are not being cruel. You are just being firm and fair. I've asked you to do something, I need you to do it. He looks down there, Nash, sit, like so. He's looking on the ground, he's sniffing, I say his name, he looks, I give him the command and I use voice inflection. This is not how we do it. Nash, sit. He'll still maybe, no, didn't, exactly what I thought. No inflection in my command. Nash, sit. Good boy. You almost guessed what was coming then. We want voice inflection, so there's another tip for you. Like I said, guys, he's just coming out spontaneously. Voice inflection, there are so many rules. So I've got one command, one response. Ask it once. Voice inflection, very important. Nash. Sit. 
down. Quick. Good boy. When you give the command down, you give it in a sharp voice inflection. If he didn't say it, I'm going to apply pressure through the lead and make him do it. I promise you, these principles of one command, one response, and voice inflection, these two alone can go so far in dog training. Let's not be these people that sit there with a piece of food and say, sit, 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 until your dog does it, and then re reward your dog. Very, very important. Remember that one command, okay? We're not gonna wait all day for our dog to do it and still reward your dog. Okay, so we're up to, what are you here, buddy? Here's someone coming to the house maybe. So there we are so far with a couple of things to remember. Finding your dog's motivation is very important. One command, one response. We want to be firm but fair. We're not being cruel. We want to use the right equipment is very important. Keeping your session short and motivated. We don't want to end on a negative. We want to end very positive. Now, let's go to the stay command. There's a few schools of thought on this. I hear a trainer the other day talking. He's a very good trainer. He has his principles. Some trainers, um, teach an implied stay, which means they teach the dog that when I say sit, that means stay in that position until I release you, which is fair and fine. I still use stay now. Will I in the future? Maybe not. Who knows? But still, I believe in giving a, I'll say to my dog, Nash, sit. Now, if he moves from there, in my training book, he hasn't done anything wrong because I didn't ask for the stay. Some people teach a wait or a stay. I don't teach a wait. I just teach a stay or I teach no say, stay. Uh, so it really comes down to what you, and I don't believe anything's right or wrong, I believe it's just your, your style of training. Another trainer I just watched believes that you should, if you give a stay or an implied stay, you should never call your dog from that position because they'll assume to break that position. And that's what prompted me to make this video a little bit because I disagree on that. If you teach a very good stay and a release word, which is either come, heal, free, whatever it is, your dog should stay in that position until they hear that word. So I don't agree that you can't call your dog from a stay. So this is how we're gonna work on a stay. I'm gonna give you the principle of teaching a stay and you can go with this as far as you want. Let's go from here, Nash. Okay, my dog comes here. Remember, I've got a beginner dog. Nash, sit, good boy, stay. First principle of your stay. Loose lead. Loose lead shows my dog that he is doing the right thing. I want your dogs to know that if there's any pressure on the lead, it means he needs to do something, either sit or down or come or whatever it is. Loose lead, stay. The feedback to my dog, he's done the right thing. So very early on, I've gone longer than I normally would here. I'm gonna teach you, show you this again, how I'd teach a beginner dog. So, Nash, free. I'm gonna release him. I'm gonna do it again, how I'd teach a beginner. I would do this, Nash, sit, stay. Free, good boy. I would only ask seconds of my dog, two seconds, three seconds even. People have a habit of pushing the limit too far with beginner dogs and they end up failing. We want to set our dogs up for success. So let's say you get two, three, four seconds any dog successfully. We might add seconds as we go on. Let's do it again. Nash, get him around behind me around here. Let's do it again. Hand signal, sit, stay. I move a little bit. Good boy, free. And I let him go again. He's very past that stage, but I'm showing you guys the principle of where you go with the stay. To get your dog to 10 seconds, it's no different than 10 minutes. It is the same principle. Do not jump too far too quick. You go through small approximations, which means very small time increases and very small distance increase. We don't do this. Watch my body language. This is what I don't want from you guys. Nash, sit. And we don't want this, stay. We don't creep back from a dog. This shows no confidence. It's almost contradictory because I'm asking him to stay, but what does my body language say? Come, like this. So we want to stand tall. We want to be confident with the body language. That doesn't mean your dog will, will never move from a stay, but you want to show confidence. So stay. Imagine I've got this dog. I walk out. Now I'm at the end of the lead. I add a little bit of movement. Good boy. I give him reinforcement. Good boy. Good boy. I should be able to talk to my dog. Nash. Good boy, Nash, good boy. Nash doesn't mean anything. Nash means look at me until he hears this. Nash, free. Good boy, now he knows he can move. You can move, buddy, free. Good boy, you know free. So he knows that his name doesn't mean anything except look at me, I need your attention. He waits for his release word. So you get the principle of teaching a stay. Small distances, 
do not rush it. If your dogs move two inches, guess what? You put them back two inches. Don't let your dog creep, because if he moves two inches, he's still getting away with moving. If you've asked them to stay here, that's where they stay. When we were assessed with our police dogs, they were assessed on their feet, not moving. Their feet weren't allowed to move. You had to do a circle. They weren't allowed to move their feet. The rules you apply will determine how good your dog learns the exercise. If you are lax and you allow gray areas, remember, if you allow your dog to move this far, you may as well allow them to get up. You have to set very black and white rules. You can or you can't. Dogs are simple like that. The reason I feel a lot of dogs aren't trained well these days is we put our human qualities into animals, our anthropomorphism. We treat them how we like to be treated. Please, thank you, don't be offensive, don't raise your voice. And it's crossing over to dog training. People feel they're offending their dogs and their dogs are getting aversion towards you. Guys, let's relax, that's not true at all. I really don't believe that at all. I believe you train the dog the right way, you can be firm, you be fair. My dog's not scared of me, he loves training still, he enjoys it, but I expect things of him. And you are okay to expect things of your dog. So let's do one more stay. Okay, Nash, around here, good boy. Stay, he gave me the sit, so I'll take it, stay. Next step might be drop lead, stay. And I just drop it, but I don't move too far yet, stay. Now watch what I do when I pick my lead up. I've got a beginner dog, imagine that, stay. I pick it up confidently. If you pick up your lead, and your dog thinks it's gonna move, he, he knows he's not, but beginner dogs will do it. As Soon as you pick their lead up, they think they're gonna move. Do it more, and as you do it, reinforce the stay. Stay, good boy, stay, good boy. And just do it over and over and teach them. Picking up the lead doesn't mean anything. He knows that until he's heard a release word. Ah, 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 good boy, okay. Good boy, I'm, tr I'm trying to bait my dog. I know, buddy, it's a little bit cruel, stay. Now, that little movement, ah, uh, ah, uh, no. Nope. Hey, back here, sit, good boy, stay. That little movement, that little break, that's dogs for you. Don't, too many trainers put videos on YouTube of perfect training, dogs never do anything wrong. They do things like that. Is it a big deal? No, Nash, stay. Now I'll release him, free. Now we can go, free buddy, okay. Um, is it a big deal? No, even with a well-trained dog, sometimes they do things wrong, they're animals. So let's go to that. I'll talk about that now. Nash broke the stay. Is it embarrassing? Not at all. Is it bad? Not at all. Dogs are dogs. Did he run off? No, he just stood up. Don't freak out about it, guys. I gave a little, uh, uh. you could say no, you can do whatever you want. You put him back. But what you do do is do that exercise again. Because he broke and I'm pur purposely tempting him to break, I do the drill again. Nash, sit, stay. So what do I do? This is what you would do if your dog did what my dog did then. You walk back, stay, you go stay, and you teach him. That shows me there's a little weakness there, so I remind him, stay, this doesn't mean anything, stay. Good boy. He's gotta learn, this is not a game, stay. This is very tempting, most dogs would move with this. Good boy, stay. Good boy, stay. Could I give some food then, stay? I might then, good boy, good boy. Good boy doesn't mean anything. We don't want our dogs to think that good boy means he can move. I then go, Nash, free. Good boy. You can see how tight he is. I'm gonna show you guys something. You see his motivation with food there? He's doing it, but he's flat. I grab this and I get a different dog. Very, very quickly, talking about motivations, okay? Like so. Like I said, I'm freestyling. Let's now go to the out command. Nash is playing tug of war. A couple of ways to teach the out. We can do the exchange method, toy for toy, something as valuable. So you might do this, out, yes, and he goes to the other toy, but he prefers this one. So that's an exchange, you'd have the identical toy. Another way is the food. As he sniffs, out, good boy. As he voluntarily lets go of the toy, I drop the word in out. It's like an operant conditioning. He's offering me a behavior, and I match that behavior with a word that he does. And in time, he'll learn what that out is. So as he voluntarily lets go to exchange for the food, I time the word out as he lets go. The next way is making the item go dead. So I do this. A tug of war, this is how I first taught him. Tug of war, tug, he's only pulling because I'm pulling. I stop, out, and he lets go. So that's, that's how he first learnt. 
I make the item go dead, put it between your knees, it gets boring. So your dog lets it go and you drop the word out in. Same with that offering conditioning. Then when you've passed all that and you find he's letting go verbally for you all the time, then we can go back to it. Nash, out. Good boy. Leave it. Out. Leave. Leave. Then you've got the out on command and the leave it. Free. Good boy. Here we go. Last one today because I think this video is getting pretty long. We'll do a leave it and then next video we'll fuck around with some more commands and basics for your dog. So let's work on the leave it. This is how I would have first taught Nash the, the leave it. I've got the lead on him. So first time I would have taught him is like this. Sit. Stay. You show the item you have the lead. Leave it. Leave it. This will be your first step, just showing. Good boy, okay, and he gets it. Out, out, quick, stay. So you pass that, you do that multiple times. Next step might be this, leave it. Good boy, free, and he can have it. On free, I use free as my release, you choose your word. And then the next step, Nash, out, sit, leave it. I give the leave it first with a little pop, leave it, leave it. I throw it, I wait. Loose lead, free. He knows it's coming. So that's sort of like the levels you could work through for your out. Then you would work off lead, dropping the lead. Nash, out. Quick, leave it, leave it, leave it. Free, and he can have it now. So they're the levels you can work through for your, your leave it, your out, your stay. Remembering those basics, I think I'll quit the video there. I don't want to make this too long and too boring for you guys. And I'll come back with some training tips. We might cover the recall, some healing, things like that. But remember what I've said so far in principle, going through back through my head, nothing in front of me written down. Voice inflection, very, very important. One command, one response. Ask them once, make them do it. Use less food. One thing on the food, when you're fading it away, you might use a variable reward schedule. So you might do this. Nash, here, ah, leave it, here, quick. Sit, good boy, do it again. Ah, sit, good boy, do it again. Sit, yes, and then I give the food. Think of that with puppies. You might do three sits and one bit of food, then five sits and one bit of food, then 10 sits and one bit of food. That sort of principle is a good way to wean the food away, fade the food away over time. Uh, what else was there? Find your dog's best motivation. Mine is the toy for my dog. Use the correct equipment. Quick, keep your session short, happy and fun. Train them in different areas. I think that's about it. Anyway, this is like I said, a bit of a spontaneous video. Hope you got some knowledge out of it and you can adopt these principles. Let's not fall victim to the I feel. Do not take this personal. If you are a positive only trainer, it has its place for certain dogs in certain environments but I've seen it fail too many times for people. The dogs are great in the backyard. Then they try down down the beach and they have no control, no recall, no nothing. Be positive. I love positive training. I think you should be positive with dogs, but I think it's also okay to give corrections. Your dog's aggressive. Well, how are you gonna fix that with some biscuits? I deal with so many reactive dogs. You need to understand that a dog will have a desire to dig, bite, jump, whatever it is. I feel if the consequence is lower than this desire, you a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time, you don't get it to stop. I believe the consequence has to be slightly above. That doesn't mean a physical correction all the time. It might be a place command. It might be something that the dog doesn't like they get made to do when they do that action. They need to know that that action elicits a response from you, which is something they don't like. Could be just put in a sit stay, could be a place, could be a small correction. But I believe after 30 years of training dogs, that this is the way to correct a lot of behavior in dogs. We're gonna talk in behavioral training, aggression, fear-based, outright aggression, frustration, reactivity, whatever you wanna call it. And it's not about being cruel. It works done the right way. It's not about hurting your dog, but it is about teaching them there is a desire you do, and there has to be a consequence. Think about your children. Your children misbehave, they have a consequence. It might be you lose privileges, you have to go to your room, you have to do a chore, whatever your your consequences as a parent, you generally adopt that principle the same with them. They have a desire to misbehave or whatever it is, and there's a consequence. Otherwise, guess what? This behavior, this desire doesn't change. You know that. So that's not 
go too crazy with the dogs feeling we can't tell them off. My dog doesn't look scared of me. I train him every day and I'm firm with him and he has tug of war and he has a good time. I think we get it pretty confused all the time how dogs like to communicate. And if we learn to understand how they like to communicate, you're gonna have a dog that listens to you a lot better. Guys, I hope you got something out of this video, what I ranted on with, um, brought you some knowledge to help you out with some training. I'll come back and I'll call it a part two in training tips for your dog uh, real soon. But practice these principles, let them follow through for all of your training. Whether you've done recall, healing, doesn't matter. Think about these principles of how you train your dog and I guarantee you have a better listening dog. What do you think, Nash? What do you think, buddy? Whoa, you're so scary. You're so scary. <laughs> Nash, out. Good boy, sit. Big. Ah, good boy. Getting better at it. Thanks, guys. Ah, uh, don't forget, give me a subscribe. If you enjoyed this video and got something out of it, a subscription, a subscribe button, push is very appreciated for content creators. We put a lot of work in. We bring you knowledge. A subscribe is always appreciated. A share, a like, or anything like that. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon for like part two of uh, training tips for your dog.